Good morning, church. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Aren't you happy that he woke you up this morning and started you on your way and you came to his house? Truly, it's a blessing. It's been hot out there, hasn't it? <laughs> you know, the, the, the old folks, and when I was a little boy, I used to hear them say, they say it's a place, you think it's hot now, they say it's a place hot or somewhere else. Yeah. You never have told you that before? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, 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 don't, we don't want to be bothered with that place that's harder than what it is now. You know, uh, you, you can choose uh, smoking or you can choose non-smoking. I'm not talking about in the restaurant now. <laughs> How about you? I'm glad I, one day I chose non-smoking. How about you? Anybody hands out there? <laughs> Thank God for his salvation. Thank God for his grace, his mercy. God is just so good. And he's been better to us than we can ever possibly be to ourselves. We thank God for all of the testimonies that we have heard. Thank God for, and for Deacon Bellamy for opening up the worship service today. Our speaker this morning is our very own evangelist, Anthony Evan, such a fine a wonderful, uh, spirit-filled Christian man of God and a uh, great family man. And I see his wife here and some of his family here. And we just want you to pray for him Amen. as God speaks to him as he speaks to us. Let's hear him for his grace and ability. Give him your amens. And uh, when you hear something that you can witness to, then witness to the word and, and confirm its truth. Is that all right? The next voice you hear will be none other than evangelist Anthony Evans. Good morning, Lincoln Park. I bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Without him, none of us would be here or not any of this would be possible. Amen. I give honor to my pastor, Glory to God. all the member of clergy, the ministerial staff and the deacons and everyone who is or consider themselves my father's children and not to get myself in trouble. I give honor to the one who allows me to be head of the Evans household, Lady Evans, our children, and the little one who has a character all his own. Give God some praise. Uh, last Sunday, Dr. Sauls started something, a DIY manual. And sometimes we have to do things ourselves. Um, and in that, we realize that sometimes uh, the prayers of Mom and them don't quite do everything we need to get done. So today, excuse me, because uh, at one point I was kind of full this morning, so uh, right now the allergies are kicking up. So if you'll pray with me, uh, maybe God will clear that up too while we're doing this. Amen. Today for just a few minutes, I want to piggyback off that concept and open this great manual. And just for a few minutes, I want to talk on the uh, thought, speak to your mountains. Gracious Lord God, it's now preaching time. I pray, Father, that you will remove all doubt. Hide me behind the cross that your people will see all of you and very little of me. Allow me to decrease that you might increase. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. For it's in Jesus' name that I do pray and give praise. Amen. Amen. From Mark 11, starting at verse 23, 
through 25, we find these words. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thy removed, and be thy cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which thou hast said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Yes. Verse 25. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. There are things from time to time that we find ourselves in, or times that we find ourselves in trouble or difficult situations uh, or circumstances. And like I said, even sometimes the prayers of mom and them and even clergy might not just be enough. Um, what do you do for those particular situations? You go to the manual, the Bible. The basic instructions before leaving earth. And in that Bible, it says that angels are assigned to each one of us. These angels are God's messengers, and they do work directly for him. Uh, now, I want you to stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this because I'm going to tie this all in because most of us want to know What's the importance of these angels? Well, let me tell you this story. Uh, and some of you may have heard bits and pieces of this. Uh, there's a young man who has been laying in a hospital bed for some five years. His body is starting to deteriorate. His organs are starting to, to he's starting to lose control of his organs. Uh, he has bed sores and that sort of thing. His mother visits him every day. On this particular day, his mother, who's come to visit, decides that she wants to step down to the concession and get a cup of coffee. Well, while she's there, a gentleman steps into the room dressed in a lab coat, and he has a conversation with this man who's in the, in the bed. He asks the young man, uh, do you believe in God? The young man says, of course I do. He says, do you know the scriptures? He says, sure I do. He says, well, do you have full understanding of the scriptures? Of course I do. He says, why are you still in the bed? He says, well, I've been here for five years now. He says, my uh, limbs are uh, not working properly. Uh, my uh, organs are beginning to shut down. I have all these problems. I've been here for quite some time. He says, I just thought you said, did you have complete understanding of the scriptures? He says, oh, what does Mark eleven twenty three 23 says? Does it not say that you can speak to your mountains? He says, yes. He says, why are you still in the bed? He says, I don't understand. He says, you have complete control or, or you have complete understanding of the scriptures. You do believe. Yes, I believe. He says, why are you still in the bed? So the young man looks at him and he says, I don't understand. He says, you have complete understanding of the scriptures. You believe. Why are you still in the bed? The moral of this story is, when you speak to your mountains, you summons angels. To your aid, the young man's mother returns to the room, finds her son walking around in the room. So she goes back, she runs back down to the nurse's station, and she's screaming at the nurse. Nurse, nurse, I need your help. Nurse wants to know what's the problem. She said, my son has died, and I need someone to come back and clean him up and help me out. The nurse runs back to the room and wants to know what happened. She says, I was visited by a man who was in a white lab coat 
while my mother was going to get the coffee. Somehow, miraculously, I, I'm now up and out of the bed. No one understood at that particular moment that the gentleman in the white lab coat was the angel who came to visit while mom went to get the coffee. All we have to do is believe what happens. My question here is, what's your mountain? Verse 23 tells us in the NIV, says, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself in the sea and don't doubt. So what's your mountain? Is it a health issue? Speak to your mountain like David in Psalms 30, verse 2, where he cried out to the Lord and the Lord healed his body. So what's your mountain? Is it unruly kids that's in your house? Speak to the Lord from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Speak to your mountains and cast your troubles into the sea. So what's your mountain? Is it finance? Is it money? Speak to the Lord and remind him that you're an heir to the promise that he made to his son Abraham, the father of many nations. Because you're in line uh, to a big payout in the inheritance because you are part of Abraham's seed. And all that you do, all you have to do is ask. That doesn't mean that the next lottery winning is yours. Because after all, everything that you ask for has to be within the Father's will. And he will bestow everything upon you that you ask for when it's in his will. Yes, Verse 24 in the NIV says, whatsoever you are praying for, believe it as if you have already received it and it will be yours. I remember hearing God can't lie. And if you believe it and receive it, What's stopping you from speaking to your mountains? Verse 25 says, while you are praying, if you have ought against anyone, if, excuse me, if you're upset, if you are mad, or if you got an issue with someone, forgive them. Chances are they've already forgot the issue to begin with. They're going on living their life you're walking around carrying something that probably happened 10 years ago. Amen. Then the Lord who's in heaven can forgive you of your sins and turn right around and bless you more abundantly than you can ever imagine. Amen. As the Lord forgive you, he's free to act on your behalf and grant you the desires and allow you to cast your mountains into the sea. Today we know that there is a manual, basic, allow, uh, basic instructions before leaving earth. And it'll tell you how to navigate your way through the lanes of any situation or trouble. We just have to learn where to open it up and start to find the right words to fit our circumstance or our situation. Yes, yes. Until then, let us all know and find a way to speak to our mountains so we can cast them into the sea. Amen? Amen. Be blessed and encouraged.
Speak to it. Glory to God. How many of you enjoyed that message? How many of you needed that message? Tell God thank you. Oh, yes. Only, you know, uh, the attitude that we take, it can be our best friend or it can be our worst enemy. But we have to believe the things that are impossible with man are possible with God. And man's extremity is God's opportunity. So we all have been given that opportunity to trust and believe in the one that can do all things. Tell your neighbor, say all things. Come on, say God can do anything. He can do all things but fail. Glory to God. That's the kind of God we serve. Even, even in doubt, we have to trust and believe knowing that he can make away somehow let us pray most holy and everlasting father we just heard in your word that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe in the things he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith and whatever thing we desire when we pray Believe that we shall receive them and we shall have them. Lord, we pray that you help us to understand that we walk by faith and not by sight. It's not what it looked like. It's not what it seems like. It's not what it feels like. But Lord, we pray that our faith don't let doubt defeat our faith, but let our faith defeat our doubt. Oh, Lord, we know if we ask and trust and believe, Lord, we know that you are able to do anything. You can heal. You can make ways out of no way. And, Lord, I pray right now for the ones that have lifted their hand and have special prayers. Lord, I pray that they will follow the scripture. As the scripture also said, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any that your father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses but if you do not forgive neither will your father in heaven forgive you your trespasses so lord right now as we stand praying and we have requests and we are petitioning you lord we pray that you will move out mountains of hate if it need be move out mountains of jealousy resentment move out mountains of anxiety move out mountains of doubt Lord, release your love and power and put it in our mind and our spirit that we can come ask, trusting, knowing that anything that we ask that you are able to do it. So, Lord, we come. We come asking you to forgive us if we've done anything, said anything. Uh, Lord, we pray that you will forgive us. Oh, Lord, we want to come before this throne in the right way. Anything that we need to leave at this altar, we need to leave it. And anything that we want to ask for, we're going to trust and know that you can do it. So, Lord, help us. Help us to walk in newness of life. Help us to be forgiving, loving, and compassionate, and kind. Love ye one another as you have loved us. We know that love covers a multitude of sin. And, Lord, if we just trust in you, and don't worry about the thing that the enemy is doing or the enemy is saying and trying to steal, kill, and destroy. We just come with trust. We just come walking in love. And thank you for your grace and your mercy. Forgive us anything that we may have did, done, or said. Put love and peace and joy in our heart. Fill us with the fruits of the Spirit love and joy and peace and long suffering and faith and meekness and temperance fill us with those fruits of spirit and Lord we know we can come to your throne and we can ask for anything and we know that you can move mountains whatever need to be moved we put it in your hands whatever need to get out of the way whatever obstacle Lord we put it in your hands trust in knowing that everything is going to be alright bless this city this county, this state, this nation, and this world. Lord, 
you have control over it all. So, Lord, we know that not anything that you cannot do. So we pray that you bless us, keep us, prop us on every leaning and falling side. This is our prayer. Let everybody say, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' sweet name. In Jesus' sweet name. Clap your hands in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. Amen. Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at lincolnparkchurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app, cash tag, Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you, and we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station reaching the world with gospel music and preaching.